Hello everyone and welcome back to One Man Stream. In our last episode, we started a five-part mini-series on our Basketball Excel spreadsheet. And if you remember last week, uh, all we basically did was an overview. I showed you each one of the uh, individual pages in the spreadsheet set, and I kind of showed you what each one of them would do. Uh, this week, what we're going to do is we're actually going to construct the Excel spreadsheet set and at the end of today's tutorial, uh, what we've completed, I'll have available for download. Today is going to be uh, episode 90, and it's part two called Constructing the Excel Spreadsheet. And uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to start from scratch, and we're going to construct uh, this spreadsheet right here. And uh, it's kind of busy. What we're going to focus on mostly today are the two tabs. Uh, this tab right here that says Main Production. And then we have a second tab right here that's the Data Sources for Overlays. And what this is, this is the information that I bring in uh, for one of my graphics that I use, mostly in pregame. And we have a, what you can see here, we have a Home Team Coaches Package and we have a visiting team coaches package and then also incorporated in our pregame are keys to the game for the home and visiting team. So what I do is I uh, put this information in the spreadsheet and from the spreadsheet I map it uh, into a graphic that we use uh, during our pregame. Uh, a lot of this information will come in automatically and I'll show you how to do that uh, as we continue through this mini series. Um, and you'll notice there's a couple different colors here. This lighter color that you see right here. Uh, this is actually the information that I'm manually putting in. All this other information in these yellow uh, fields, these are brought in automatically. So I don't have to do this. This is actually brought in from the, the main production spreadsheet uh, that we're gonna work on today. Uh, this information here, I actually have to put this in as well. Uh, the keys to the game, I put this in manually. And then this different colored section right here for the visiting team coaches package, I put this in manually. But all the other uh, information on these um, on the spreadsheet is actually brought in from the main production sheet, which is right here. And I want to point your attention to this top line here. This is the information that we're going to map. When we bring this in as a data source, I'm going to check a box that says use top row as column names. And that's what I'm going to do right under. You can see the heading right here where it says uh, team name home and then underneath of it it says Simon Kenton. When I'm mapping this, when I'm mapping it to the uh, team name home portion of the graphic, I'm going to look for this right here where it says team name home and then the information that it's going to pull in is going to be this right here. So this first part is basically home team information and I'm going to show you that the headings that we've got under the, uh, the first part. Okay, So these are the first headings that we have. You can see right here where it says, says team name home, and then you can see right here also where it says team name home. So across that top line there, you're gonna see where it says team name home. It's, it's uh, SB name home abbreviation. That stands for scoreboard name home abbreviation. So this is the, on the uh, scoreboard, uh, this is what's going to be reflected and we have it abbreviated because uh, like I said uh, I think in the previous tutorial we have limited area there uh, so we have to make it a little bit smaller. The next column is team and mascot name home and then the column after that is mascot name home followed by mascot image home and then we have team color home and this is actually just a uh, color in text form and then this next one says team color home hexadecimal and this is what we actually bring in uh, to change the background colors on our scoreboard and in different graphics that we have uh, in this uh, basketball production setup. The next part we're going to come to is team, team name visitor, uh, scoreboard name visitor abbreviation, uh, team and mascot visitor, mascot name visitor, mascot image visitor, team color visitor, and then team color visitor hexadecimal. And that's this information again right here. So let's go ahead and bring this over a little bit further. And this brings us to right here. So let's go to these next headings. Home team record, visiting team record, uh, MOP, MOP sponsor logo, that stands for most outstanding player sponsor logo. Uh, this one is scoreboard design slash setup. Uh, like I've said in previous tutorials, 
Uh, we have several different formats that we use depending on what area of the state we're in, and uh, that is what this right here designates. Uh, then we have our play-by-play -play announcer, and then we have our color analyst. We have tabs for each one of those, and that information is going to be automatically populated in this top row. So you can see as we come over, we have our play-by-play -play analyst for this game was Paul Najar, and then the uh, analyst was Gary Forrest. So let's go a little bit further to the next group, and we're going to have scoreboard sponsor image. We're going to have uh, KTG sponsor image, which is keys to the game. Then we're going to have next on the channel uh, logo, and what that is is we have a sponsor for our um, upcoming uh, slate that we're going to have, what games we're going to have upcoming, and we have a, a, a local sponsor uh, that sponsors that particular portion uh, of the production. Uh, we have a local scoreboard sponsor image. We have someone else that sponsors that, and their logo is on the uh, scoreboard the entire game. We also have a sponsor for the ticker, so we have a ticker, a place for the ticker image. We have a field name uh, game description, like if it's a regional game, a district game, or the name of the field from the particular high school that we're doing the game from. Uh, during the football uh, season, we actually have a graphic for weather conditions, and that's from a particular sponsor as well. So that's this next group along the top here. And then uh, we have a sponsor for our weather that we do, and we have uh, the sponsor logo for that that goes on that particular graphic. Then we have a local scoreboard uh, that we put up during the game. We put that up during breaks and halftime and then at the end of the game. And this is where we, uh, this is the portion where we would input the text for that. And this is where the text is actually grabbed and brought into vMix uh, from this uh, particular area right here. So let's see where that would be. It'd be right here, a local scoreboard text. And this information is actually inputted right, well, let me get rid of this for just a second. You can actually see right here, and I'll cover this in just a moment. Uh, this is where the information is uh, put in uh, for the scoreboard right here. And then what happens is when we put it in here, it's reflected in this area right here. And then we map the graphic to this particular area right here, and it's going to bring in all the information. So whenever we change this, it's automatically going to be changed in this area. And then this area right here is actually what's populating the graphic. Our uh, next header here is most outstanding player. And again, this most outstanding player information uh, that's being uh, brought into this area right here is actually from right here. So I'm, we'll, we will be manually typing this in. This information is going to get pulled into this field right here, and this field is going to be mapped to our most outstanding player graphic. Uh, the next uh, group of information that we have is uh, visiting a uh, basketball coach image. Then we have home basketball coach image. We have home football coach image, visiting football coach image. And all of that information, as you can see, is right here. Then we have visiting football coach image home football coach name, visiting basketball coach name, visit um, home football coach name, and then we have head coach home team and head coach visiting team. And I have the head coach in quotation because that text is actually being brought in from the specific field. So what we're, this is actually what we're putting in on a particular space on the teams tab. And I can go ahead and, and show you that. On the teams, you can see right here where it says head coach assumption, head coach Ballard. It's actually pulling in everything in this particular cell. Uh, so that we're actually including the head coach part of it. That's why I had head coach uh, in quotation marks. And that's everything across that, that top line. Let's go ahead and look at the vertical column that we have right here. So the information that we have, it says left scoreboard team home. And then underneath that, we have a drop down menu and we're able to select from all the teams, what team is going to be the home team for this particular matchup. Uh, the next column is uh, right scoreboard team, and it says visitor. And uh, then we do the same thing for that. We have a drop-down menu, and we can select which team we want for that. So as you can see right now, we have Simon Kenton as the home team, and we have Spencer County as the visiting team. I'll show you this real quick, the data source for overlays. If you look at this one, You'll see right here that for the home team package, 
we have Simon Kenton listed as the home team, and then we have the Pioneers listed as their um, mascot, and then we have Simon Kenton Pioneers right here, and then we have key players. These light yellow fields are fields that are automatically changed by us just selecting the team. This tan column right here is actually what we're putting in manually. So this is all for pregame. I have um, like six overlays uh, or six graphics that I run through for the uh, home team package. And then we come with keys to the game after a break. I have overlays for those. And then we come back with the visiting coach package. These fields that are in light yellow, these are going to be changed just from us selecting of the two teams that are going to be playing during this ball game. The tan fields, as I said just a moment ago, these are ones we're actually going to have to manually set. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to go back to the main production. I'm going to select South Odom as the home team. And I'm going to select North Odom as the visiting team. Now, you can see that when I selected South Odom, all this information right here changed to South Odom. And let's go a little bit further. And you can see when I selected North Odom as the visiting team, that all this information here changed to North Odom. So let me show you what happened on the data sources for overlays. Let's go look for that. Okay, now all this information changed here. See where it says South Odom now? Uh, before it said Simon Kenton. So now we have all this information changed. We didn't have to do anything. We didn't have to go in there and physically change this information. It happened just from us selecting uh, the team. So now we have uh, Coach Steve Simpson listed as the head coach, and then it pops in head coach South Odom. We have his image that's gonna come in on the graphic. All this information here has changed to South Odom. We then have to come in in these tan areas and manually put this information in. But a lot of the work has been done for us right here just by selecting those two teams. Then we're going to come back from break. We're going to do our keys to the game. You can see where the home team is now South Odom. The visiting team is now North Odom. You can see where the two logo graphics have changed. We have the uh, South Odom uh, graphic right here. We have the North Odom graphic that's going to be right here. And this information is going to be pulled into the graphic utilizing data sources from vMix. And then we're going to go to the visiting team package. And you can see where Coach David Levich comes in. Uh, the head coach's name changed. It brings in head coach for North Odom. It changes this to North Odom Mustangs. Now it says North Odom Mustangs key players. That's why I have those headings broken up into different things. Sometimes it'll just say mascot. Sometimes it'll say team name and mascot. Sometimes it just says team name. That's because I have different fields and I use that information on different graphics. So that's how that information is populated into the data source overlay. Uh, the next part is the game format. As I mentioned previously, uh, we have uh, different game formats based on what part of the state we're doing the production in. Uh, on this one here, it just happened to be the 8th Region Championship game. Then we also have our, uh, a list of play-by-play -play analysts. Oops, got to bring this back over. So by clicking the drop-down menu, we'll be able to see those. And then we have our color analysts right here. We have a drop-down menu for that, and we can select those as well. Uh, when we do our selection, that information is being pulled up into this top row, and then it's going to be utilized within a graphic. Uh, the home team record and visiting team record, this is actually things that we manually put in. If I bring this over a little bit, you can see right here where it says, it says home team record and visiting team record. Uh, just to show you that these are linked, let's go ahead and change this one that says 24 and 9 to 24 and 10. And you can see where it changed from 24 and 9 to 24 and 10. Uh, the next part is the field court name. Uh, when we did that eighth region final, uh, it was uh, we were at uh, Roy Winchester Gym at Henry County High School. They called the gym the Roy. This information here is for the weather. Uh, I showed you a little bit earlier where that information is going to be pulled into a particular cell and then that, that information incorporated into a graphic. This information here is for the local scoreboard. Again, this information is manually put in and then pulled into a graphic. Uh, this right here is the upcoming information for the channel. 
Okay, let's look right here at this cell. I have lots of stuff in there right now, but let's just change this to bunches of stuff. And you can see where that information changes right here, just from putting the information in here. It's changed in the cell, and then the information from this cell is being brought into the graphic. I know I sound like a broken record, but I just, I'm just i trying to uh, repeat uh, how things are done within the spreadsheet set. So if, uh, if you have new things you want to add or new fields you want to add to your particular spreadsheet uh, set, you'll know the logic behind how I've set mine up uh, so that you can make changes or alterations to yours. And the last part here is most outstanding player. Uh, this information is again manually input and it's brought into our most outstanding player graphic. So these first two tabs are, the, are by far the busiest tabs on the spreadsheet. This next part is teams. And all I did is I went to the uh, Kentucky High School Athletic Association's website. I copied all their teams. Then I came and pasted it in the spreadsheet right here. And then I put these headings up here. So just to give you an idea of the breakdown, we have team color and hexadecimal color. And you'll be able to see that this is a drop-down list. And this drop-down list actually comes from here. And I'll show you how we do this in part three. But here it is right here. So when we select a color uh, by using the VLOOKUP, it's going to bring in its corresponding hexadecimal color. Let's look for a red. And red comes in, tomato sauce red. And when I click on this, the uh, the hashtag with the uh, six F's, that's actually the hex hexadecimal color for white. But when I click on this, you'll see where it brings in this hexadecimal color right here. And this is the color that we're looking for, which is red. So we have team color, hexadecimal color. Then we have a football coach's image, basketball coach's image, basketball coach's name and now you understand why we put this information in here so that it can be pulled in to the data source for overlay fields then we have football coach's name and then we have that text that says head coach dash team then we have that text that says head coach and then the team name after it these we manually put in but when we select that drop down menu by using vlookup it's going to bring in everything that's associated with that line for that particular team. Next is school logos. These are all the school mascot logos that we have. Uh, but all I did is I, I just brought that whole file in. I copied it and pasted it and brought it in here. And then after we bring it in here, I'll show you how use data validation, uh, we're able to make a drop down menu. And that's why when we go here, nope, when we go under teams, if we go under mascot image, we have all these logos in here, and all these logos come from the school logos tab. So all we did was make a, uh, a drop down list using the data validation uh, tool within Excel, and we're able to make drop down menus. Once we make it for one, it's very easy to make it for all the rest of them, and I'll show you how we do that as well. Team color, the same thing. We got the colors from that hexadecimal tab. This one right here is the colors. And you can see how they're all listed in here. When we select the color, the subsequent hexadecimal color is brought in. So let's do this one for uh, midnight blue. And you can see where all the Fs change to this hex hexadecimal color right here. A huge time saver. Takes a couple minutes to, well, it probably takes less than that to set up each team. But once you have that team set up one time, you won't have to mess with it again. All you'll have to do is select it from the drop down menu. Scoreboard name. We have a few different scoreboards, like I said, based on the area of the state that we're doing it in. And then we have drop down menus to select the logo uh, for the particular uh, asset, production asset that we need to change the sponsor logo for. Home team. Uh, I just go to the website again. I uh, copy the information from the Kentucky High School Athletic Association. It has the starting lineups for uh, each one of the teams. Now, this is not something I set up for each team. I do this on each game day. But what I've done is this area right here, all this area right here, I actually have mapped to this area right here. So if you'll notice, we have a drop-down menu here, and all the players right here are selected, are, are, you're able to select through this drop-down menu. 
These areas that I have in here are what's being shown along this top part right here. So let's change Travis Croman, who is an excellent basketball player, uh, by the way, to Braylon Bilton. You can say, see I change it to Braylon Bilton right here, and then automatically these fields change to Braylon Bilton. It brought in his name, and it brought in his position. Let's change it back to Croman again. And you can see where this information changes back to Travis's information, number one and position guard. So when I select these, it's bringing in the information in this entire row right here. And like we did on the main production setup, this information is being brought in to a particular graphic. Same thing for visiting team. I bring in the information, I copy and paste it in here. Uh, the reason that I have, um, just in case you were wondering why I have the number listed twice, it has, on the website, it has it listed in this format. It has the number, it has the person's name, it has their position, then it has their class. Uh, when you're doing VLOOKUP, since our search term is the name, it's looking from left to right. So it wouldn't be able to pick up the number uh, position over here because that is to uh, the left part of our selection or to the left side of our selection. And when you select something, then it starts reading the information left to right. So that's why I had to bring in the number field again. So all I do is I copy this information, I paste it here, and then when I select one of the players, it automatically searches left to right for the particular information that we want for these particular fields. Our play-by-play -play names, I put these in manually. Uh, when I set it up, I set it up for about 50 uh, different spaces, so I have lots of room to go. Analyst name, the same way. I just have a few of them in here right now, but I have it set up for about uh, 50 spaces, so as I add it, it's automatically gonna be populated into our drop-down menu. These are our sponsor images, and we have a whole bunch of sponsors. We take all this information here, we put it into a list, and then that list is, uh, then we're able to select from that list the particular sponsors we need uh, for the particular graphics. Our football coaches images are right here, same thing. Out of this tab right here, we create a drop down list, and then we're able to, on the, on the team list, then we're able, you can see right here, um, then you can see right here under, I, I didn't have it set up for a football coach's image. I'm gonna have to go back and put that in. But for basketball coach's image, you can see where we have the drop down menu, and then you can select from all the basketball coaches that are on this particular sheet right here. The next tab is the hexadecimal colors. Again, it brings in the actual color here and then it brings in its associated hexadecimal color. And then I'm gonna take you back to the main production. Now I know we went through a lot of information and we went through a lot of information very quickly, but you're gonna be able to download this entire spreadsheet. If you just check in the comments, you'll be able to see where you'll have a link to download the spreadsheet as it is, and then you can make any changes to it that you would like. But I just wanted to show you the setup, how I have it, where the information comes from, and the process of filling out the information along the top here in order to have these particular uh, fields brought into the graphics as we need them. That will conclude our tutorial for today. Part two of our uh, Basketball Excel series. Uh, this was episode 90, Constructing the Excel Spreadsheet. If you like what we're doing here at One Man Stream, please give us a thumbs up and a like. Make sure that you do subscribe so that you'll be alerted as soon as new videos are posted. If you have a moment, please stop by our website. That's onemanstream.com. And we have a shop there that has all the graphics that we've created uh, throughout this tutorial series, along with many of the vMix UTC uh, controllers or, as well. And coming soon, I'm actually going to have some one-man stream merchandise, if you might be interested in that, uh, some t-shirts and some mouse pads and a few other items. So if you get a chance, please stop by the shop there at onemanstream.com. And as always, thank you so much.